This tutorial is going to show you how I made a movie using Google Gemini 2.5 Flash Image Preview, which I think we all know as Nano Banana. I took the images that I generated in Nano Banana and brought them into Hilo. Hilo just released start frame, end frame animation, and I wanted to give that a shot too. If you've been following my channel, you know that Nano Banana isn't the first image generator to have multi-turn control, which is great for filmmakers because you can start with an establishing shot and do over the shoulder shots. And it allows you to keep the character and objects consistent in different views, whether you're inside a spaceship or outside a spaceship. OpenAI's Sora has been doing this for months with their image generator. And Runway has done this for a while as well and just released a video version of this with Aleph. So what makes Nano Banana different besides the cool catchy name? It's free and it's fast. And that's a big deal right now because everything is so expensive. So my goal was to make an entire movie using just one selfie. So I asked Google Gemini, how do I get started with Nano Banana? And it recommended starting with Google AI Studio. I'll show you how to use it in Gemini, but this is what I did. And there's one advantage to this way. So I took that selfie and then I just said, the person in this photo will be called Mike. I don't know if you need to name characters, but I just wanted to have a quick way to reference the character. All right, so take Mike and give him a wardrobe of a space mechanic in a gritty sci-fi movie. It came back with this and I think it's pretty good. Like the, the image looks a lot like me. It is a little bit like CGI looking. I think when you upload a real photo of someone, even of yourself, they will do things to ensure that it doesn't look real enough to be believable in case you're trying to do something nefarious. And you'll see this C branched conversations and we'll get to that in a minute, but let's see how quickly you can just kind of generate the main beats of your story. So I had him in the cockpit. Now I want to get outside. So I said, can you keep the same scene and cinematic style, but move outside to the exterior of the spacecraft and have Mike exiting? Ensure it stays 16 by nine. Like the color palette is the same. The outfit is the same. The look from this distance is pretty similar. I think this is awesome. Like we've gone from inside a spacecraft and now we're outside. So I wanted him walking away from the spacecraft. So I said, now I want the same person in the same cinematic style Show me a medium close-up as he's walking away from the spacecraft to look for resources. And sometimes I like this rule of thirds framing slightly low angle. A lot of times AI wants to put the subject dead center in the middle of the image, and that's not always the look that you want to go for. I found that rule of thirds is a good way to give more of a balance to the composition. But this one, it looks like he's resting. So I said that. It looks like he's resting. He should be walking. I like that composition though. Now, one thing I want to point out, which I talked about in a previous prompting video, I'm using natural language. I'm not trying to do fancy prompt engineering. I'm just using natural language. It understands natural language. So the trick is being able to communicate your intent clearly for Gemini. So I just said, hey, it looks like he's resting. He should be walking. So there he is. I like this shot a lot more. So there's a helicopter rotor here, and I really should have taken it out before I started doing the next scenes. So kind of examine the shots that you're doing uh, before you move on. Here's one thing I didn't notice. There are these glowing plants here now, which show up in the cave later. There's also a floating rock. And if you know anything about AI, it loves floating islands and bioluminescence. So at the time I was making this, I didn't even notice this until I saw it in the cave. All right, so he's walked for a little bit and he's at the exterior of a cave, cautiously wondering if he should go in. It did this. He's already inside the cave, so I had to go back later and generate the exterior shot where he goes in. But as you can see, that hel helicopter rotor is there. It's the only time it shows up because it's carrying it through from the previous ones. But we've got him on this side and he's looking over at these glowing plants, wondering if maybe there's energy there. And now I want him squatting down by those and examining them. So we've, we had him over here and now he's squatting down. And now I want to move in for a close up. So let's uh, close up so we can see his face. And then he pulls one up by the roots. Now, the one thing you'll really notice is the face here is completely different from the pilot's face. Well, maybe not completely different, but it's different enough to where it no longer looks like me. Whereas in the first one, I thought it looked like me. In the second one, someone pointed out it looks like a character from The Office. And that is spot on. This, this could be the same guy. All right, now we have him walking back to the broken down spaceship. 
and he's in the cockpit. And instead of the sparks, we're going to replace it with the glowing roots of the plant. That I want him to have a little bit of a smile that like he's pleased with himself, but I just, I didn't like these smiles at all. I wanted a little bit more action and I couldn't get it. I would get things like this, where if I, if I use two images, it would combine them in this way, which is not what I was looking for. So I just said, oh, there's two people in that shot. I just want one. And it's like, okay, there you go. <laughs> Still two, of course. So that's pretty much what I did. And it went almost as fast as I just showed you. Like I was coming up with ideas on the fly and it would give me the image seconds later. This is something that you could really use for storyboarding or prototyping an idea really quickly or making a whole movie if you want. One thing I learned is that I can go up here to where these three dots are and click there and say branch from here. So the branch option allows you to jump back to a previous image and try a different path. AI tends to forget earlier parts of conversations. So for instance, when I had the pilot bring the plant back to the cockpit, I branched off from the original cockpit photo. Really quick, I'll show you how you could do the same thing if you're just using Gemini. So you would just upload the image of yourself and then put a prompt in. This is the same prompt I used before and then we'll hit submit. Okay, and this is not as good in my opinion. So in this case, we're gonna say make it less dystopian and dark. There should be a utopian city outside in the distance. <laughs> and it just did that. So it basically just changed the window, but it made all of this. So. So you can say, remove the glowing green lights from his suit, uh, change the red light to a warm white. All right, so, so we got rid of the green, but we don't really have the light, that's okay. So now we're gonna show an exterior shot of this spacecraft as the pilot is exiting. It's no longer 16 by nine. So not only is it a different character, it's a different cinematic style. So I'm gonna say, I want the pilot in cinematic style from the previous image, keep it widescreen 16 by nine. <laughs> nope. It added like bars. <laughs> There's our bioluminescent glow. I'm doing this to show that it doesn't always work because I think sometimes people get really amped up about this stuff and then when you try it, it doesn't work the way it worked in the demo. I guess what you could do is download this and then let's add that downloaded image here. All right, so I'll add the image and then I'll just say an exterior shot of the spacecraft as the pilot is exiting. I want the same pilot in cinematic style. Keep it widescreen. <laughs> We're back to this guy. Okay, all right, I give up. So I'm gonna go over to Hilo, and before I do, I need to address why I didn't use VO for this. And it's not because it's super expensive, although that's part of it, it's because it wouldn't let me do it. I was gonna include dialogue in this, so I thought I could just say, the camera pulls out slowly and pans a little to the right, the wires spark erratically, not too big or often, and then the pilot sighs and says, I'll never get off this planet unless I find some organic fuel. And it was like, I can't generate this video. Try describing another idea, and it's like, Oh, okay. Instead of pulls out, I'm going to say zooms out because I know that the content filters are pretty aggressive on VO. So I thought maybe that's it. Um, and it was like, no, I can't do that. So I tried to keep it more hopeful. Like, I wonder if this planet has any organic fuel. And it was like, sorry, I can't generate that. Then it was just like, let me just put this image here and no prompt and did that. And it was like, I can't generate it. So for some reason, even though it has the little Gemini watermark, both the burned in watermark and their secret watermark that they talk about, it wasn't able to do it. So I moved over to Hilo, which worked out well for me because I wanted to use Hilo's start frame, end frame, and this was a good opportunity to test it out. So in Hilo, I went to image to video, there's a way that you can do the start frame here and the end frame. This was gonna be my start frame, and then this was the end frame. And then I said, the man walks over to the glowing anemone-like plant. The glow increases the closer he gets. And I turned off this prompt optimizer, which I don't really like in Hilo that much. I also went to the camera controls when I used the start frame and chose this. There's different ones to choose. You can roll over them. I liked the idea of this left circling one, and then you get a result like this. So a lot of people already know this, but if you're new to it, you can do a start frame and end frame and then use this end frame as a new start frame. Um, and then that gives you the ability to do animations that are a little bit more complex that go through different steps. So in this case, we have the spaceship rotating. I'm gonna delete that first one. 
And then I'm gonna switch the order. So now the last frame is gonna be the first frame, the start frame. And then I'm gonna add a new end frame. It looks like there's nothing there, but if you look, there's a little tiny speck in the sky. So you say the hovering spacecraft circles around and blasts off until it's just barely visible in the sky. So my movie didn't have any voices in it, but I did use the Eleven Labs sound effects. They have a great collection here. I used some of theirs, and then I generated some of my own for things like slimy anemone tentacles slithering and things like that. And if you're like, wow, there's so many tools and so many subscriptions that you have to have to make a movie, I think that's why Nano Banana is so exciting because it is free, at least for now, and it is fast, and the quality is generally really good. Um, although you do need to iterate a lot. I've always encouraged people, don't wait for this stuff to become perfect because then you're not gonna know how to use it as well as someone else who's been using it now when it's not perfect. You're gonna learn little workarounds and tips to get better results. And you're not gonna have that sort of depth of knowledge about how this stuff works unless you get in there when it's not perfect. You have to be okay with creating things where there's a little bit of compromise due to what the model is capable of doing. Imagine if you could go back in time three or five years ago and just be like, here's what you can do, but I'm not gonna do it yet because it's not perfect. People be like, are you crazy? Don't wait for it to be perfect. Don't compare it to movies that you're seeing on Netflix. This is a movie made by one person using generative AI. I really think that if you want to get into AI filmmaking, Nano Banana is a great way to just start storyboarding out your idea and seeing what it's like to generate consistent characters and consistent scenes, all for free. Once you get all of those images generated, you can then bring it into a tool like Hilo and bring it to life. All right, thanks for watching and uh, be sure to check out my other tutorials and other movies.